1314, take it back to Boston Music Scene. WEMF Radio. I'm Evan Falchuk, and I'm the United Independent Party candidate for governor of Massachusetts. Like most voters, I know lawmakers aren't spending our tax dollars wisely. They just came up with a billion dollars to expand the Boston Convention Center, but they tell us they can't fund what we need, like health care, education, and job training. This just doesn't make sense. Things won't change until we vote to make a change. I'm Evan Falchuk, and I believe we can start to fix things. To learn how, please visit falchuk2014.org. Paid for by Falchuk for Governor. WEMF. Presented by the Sound Museum Boston. Welcome. Young Jerks. Doing a special edition this week, a mass gubernatorial. Strop hole. I haven't got that right. You did. Good Gubern- practicing. Gubernatorial is just a kind of a fun word to say. I love it. I like saying it. Gub- gubernatorial. And straw pole, too. Stra- stra- I always like the straw, straw pole. poles. <laughs> this is our version of the straw pole. That's right. And, uh, Not the one where they kick people out and they silence people. The one where everyone gets this to This is speak. everybody's straw pole. There's, everybody is on here. we got Charlie Baker, Martha Coakley. Evan Falchuk, Scott Lively, Jeff McCormick. We also have a none of the above and a write-in. And we're already category. getting write-in votes. No, no vermin? No, well, <laughs> well, we haven't had a vermin <laughs> vote yet, actually. I don't know. Maybe online we'll check that because we're already started online. But yep. we have had some write-in votes already. I might have one of them might have been mine. No, I, I think, think I, so. I didn't see governor. one in your name. No, I- <laughs> so one of vermin friends. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But we have a big show. We have a lot going on today. A lot of guests in the studio. It's going to be like a quick rip-roaring show here today. Yeah. I'm and a phone number is 617-500-7100. Yeah. Finish my sentence. Sentences. Words. Words. Yeah. <laughs> Sandwiches. Sa- That's what we do here. Yeah. I'll finish your sandwich. I'm hungry. I'm hungry for politics. <laughs> That's right. We got a big election coming up less than 10 days. November 4th, get ready to vote. And today we wanted to cover a campaign that we've been covering, the one that we like. You know, I, I, we're biased. We admit it. Unlike, a little, just a little bias. The difference between our bias, I think, and the rest of the mainstream media is that we're honest about our bias. That's true. We admit we who we you. like. We tell you who we're voting for because we're going to tell you today. And we tell you why, too. Yeah. You know? I'm you voting know. for Evan Felchuk. I also am voted for voting for Evan Felchuk. So there's our bias right out, right, out, right <laughs> off the bat. We're going to tell you that. And, and we're going to have special rules on this. But before we do, we want to talk about some of the what, what's happened in the news because we haven't gotten to comment on it. Um, Evan's suing, number one. Sue in New England Cable News, the uh, Worcester Telegram and Gazette, and the Worcester Chamber of Commerce to be included in the debate. Uh, We'll have a hearing on Monday afternoon. 2 p.m.? Yeah, to find out. And if he gets the injunction, he might actually get in this debate on Monday night, which would be the most interesting Monday ever. I I think it's going to be a magical Monday. Me too. You know, I think he's got a good chance of winning this. Yeah. Knock on wood. Yeah, knock on it everyone. Find wood and on knock on judge. it. You never know what kind of judge you're going to get. But he's got a good chance looking at the lawsuit and why he brought it against them, and not some of these other people that we want to also talk about. WGBH, for instance. Mm. Is this a judge that was appointed by a Democrat or we don't a know Republican? Yet. We don't know anything about that. We're not going to talk about. He's going to yeah, be talking yeah, later. We'll introduce you later. Sorry. And, uh, <laughs> and 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 uh, the judge thing, like. We, we're not going to say anything bad about the judge. We, we love that judge. Yeah, we love that judge. I'm going to buy her we're flowers. Yeah. They're, uh, they're in the mail. Yeah. That's right. So anyways, um, yeah, we should talk about WGBH because we want to talk about that too, uh, about that podcast and, oh, and Mr. Uh, David Bernstein. Was it the scum? The scrum? The scum? I thought it was the scum. I don't know. Maybe it was the scum. And is, is it, scrum? it seems is like it, that. It it's scrum? like that's what they really want to be. What, is, we're the young jerks. I mean, come on. You know, at be least honest. we tell you. We tell be you. Honest. We tell you that are a bunch of jerks. You yeah. know. <laughs> oh, so they bring on uh, Evan Falchuk on this little podcast that they have on WGBH Radio after they exclude him from the debate. They go. Like, oh, we'll give you some airtime, buddy. On our little lowly. Lo- I mean, at WGBH, everything's like so. Like they have the 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 flowers and the. The, the birds chirping in the background, and it's very soothing and very educational. You know, I listen except for the scrum. The, except for the scrum. This but is I, where this is where they still act smart, but they're just jerks. They're, they're also, trying to be us in a way. I, they also have to change what they're going to call themselves because they've been calling themselves National Public Radio, but it's not public if you're taking the public's money. So I'll tell you publicly, I was a hundred dollar a month supporter. I have canceled my subscription. Dan Fishman weighing in already. All right, so, Fishman. So like, Good. I'm a I'm a listener, right, right. of GBH, right? Yes. And you should it, go to BUR. And it, and it bothers me, <laughs> like immensely, that 
they are limiting my access. They try to act like, well, we're here, you know, we're going to speak very softly and give you all the news that you need and inform you about everything that's going around in the world, except if you want to vote for all of the candidates for governor. You know, we're going to be lie and be little. And who who were the two journalists that really did most of the... Well, let's talk about the scrum, because oh, the they're scrum. not quite like that. Their voice the is a little bit different. But, they're more like Joe Battenfeld. They're they, like they, more like, you know, it was that guy, uh, number one, I think the one who was being really obnoxious was... Uh, David Bernstein, Bernie, Bernie, who's Mr. Horse heart, Race. He, he acts like uh, po- local politics is uh, covering the Patriots. Yeah, like he's a beat reporter, like he's in the locker room, like he's trading access. Is that what this is about? Trading access with your Democratic and your Republican friends to exclude a third party voice. Uh, when you turn around and say, we've already got phone calls. We should hold off, though. We're not going to take them yet. You keep calling though six one seven five hundred seventy one hundred. Um, when you when you exclude a voice that people want to hear. And a good part of your listenership, and when they're so enthusiastic and so fired up right now, that's you, that's your bad. And when you don't listen to them, when when they respond on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter, and you don't understand it, like how do you miss that? You're, you're giving up a certain amount of your audience. That's why we're going to have a lot of votes today, a lot of calls. We're already getting the calls. We already got a lot of listeners. I'm checking out the numbers. The numbers are going up. Six one seven five hundred seventy one hundred. I just think it's it's lame. It's lame when you want in this democracy. I will sign to put anyone on the ballot. I don't even care who anyone. it is. When I and anyone that comes up to me collecting signatures, I sign because we need more candidates. We need more voices. We need more campaigns, not less. We don't need less voices. We right. need more. The problem is it's monopolized. It's just two voices in every debate, and usually only one that has a chance at winning. Yeah. And and when you say that's the way it should be, that we we need to spend all of our time talking about what well, what are some of these debate questions that they came up with too? Such fluff, like they were like, oh, what's your best day, Charlie Baker? What's your worst day? What really bothers you personally? I don't care what bothers Martha Coakley personally, or what you know that she likes vanilla ice cream. <laughs> I want to hear Evan Felchuk talk about Partners Hospital against these two candidates. Yeah. That's what we're missing. About the real cost of healthcare yeah. and actually get into meat and potato issues of how to get things done rather than just kind of glazing over the actual issues and just offering platitudes. And that's something that Evan, you know, really keeps to a minimum is platitudes. And that's why I think that he was kept out of the debate because the it's very comfortable for the two main party candidates to not have to deal with those issues and just play on the fringe with platitudes without actually offering real solutions yeah and really getting into it yeah really getting into the minutiae because that makes people think yeah. and they might all of a sudden think that maybe they don't like those people so much yes yeah so we should uh, talk about what we're really going to do today too this big thing because people are like what are you talking about young jerks gubernatorial straw poll what is that what's a straw poll man <laughs> is it like a straw man we got some rules too i haven't even told you all the rules oh there's you. rules yeah there's rules oh geez the first rule is that you can vote uh, twice. Basically. Early and often? Nice. No, it's the Chicago twice. rule. You can, <laughs> vote, you can vote one online. Yeah. So we have a poll. That's the only place you can vote in the poll. People are sending me messages and trying to cast their votes. No, vote on that poll. Yep. There's an official poll on the uh, event page. You vote there. You can cast one vote there. And then you can vote, cast one vote on the show. And that means we have paper ballots for anyone who's in the studio, anyone that's around EMF radio, any of the guests. We're handing out ballots. We have paper ballots. And then we also have... You can call in. You can place your call. You can call, say who you're voting for and why, 617-500-7100. Uh, we will take your calls. Now, if people want to call in, this is a good time to do so. Um, we're also sitting in, oh, some of the other rules, too, oh. uh, for call-ins today. Okay. We, we also made a rule that we'll take, we'll count it as two votes if you're an elected official calling in. Today. Ah, That's like, a soup, like a super delegate? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Because, you know, we, nice. we, we want them to call in. I like right? that. Anyone's, any of those people that call in are good people, too, usually. Well, sure. They Evan Kenny can... or Diane Russell. For sure. Yeah. So, For sure. So hopefully they call in. Um, why don't we introduce our guest as well now, since uh, Dan Fishman's already been speaking. He's here. Say hello, Dan Fishman, Mr. Libertarian. I'm happy to be here. I think this is my sixth appearance on the show. Wow, you I'm proud of myself. And we do have a phone call, so let's take the phone call and we'll introduce the rest of our guests. Hello, listener. Hi, are you calling, listener? Hello. Who's on the line? I can hear you now. Talk to us. Oh, dead air. Dead air. When you, when you, if you, if you, if you uh, have a phone that works, call us back. <laughs> <laughs> it's six one seven five hundred seventy one. 
hundred. I think that was a uh, vote for Charlie Baker. This is just a silent, <laughs> silent vote. Dead for people Charlie. calling. Dead, just dead people calling in. Are you sure those aren't from Martha Coakley? I don't know. Say, Coakley's I got the dead vote wrapped up. I think the Democrats usually take the dead vote a little better than the Republicans. Oh my God! <laughs> it's up for, I think it's up for grabs this year. Yeah. <laughs> so who else we have in the studio here? So uh, Vader just said it's up for grabs this year. We have uh, Mike Coombs. Hey. He's a libertarian running for office right now, uh, state rep. Yep. Six Middlesex, most of Framingham. Excellent. And uh, glad to have him back on the show. And we yep. also have from the Evan Felchuk campaign, very happy to have them here. Um, some people we've been become friends with, uh, one who's been in the studio in the past with Evan himself. Uh, I believe you're the campaign manager. That's correct. Her name is Jen Belt. Glad to be here. Thanks for having us. Thank you. And we also have Taylor, who is with the Evan uh Chuck campaign as well. Tell uh, Taylor DeSantis. Yes, you got it right. You did it, wow. Mike. You're in a roll. That's yeah. like the, honestly, that's like the seventh name that Mike has said in a row correctly. And I have to do it for Falchuk's campaign. You have to do it. Thank you. It's much appreciated. He secretly put phonetics on top of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, there's a picture. <laughs> unbelievable, you guys. So um, we're talking about the campaign for governor, and. Let's get right into it. Well, like, uh, we have the you know two folks for the Falchuk campaign. I'm going to ask you first, why should people vote for Evan Falchuk, and why did you decide to get involved in this campaign? Well, for the first part, uh, a lot of it has to do with his positions and that he will take firm positions and won't flip-flop. Now, it's impossible to get a voter to agree on every position a candidate takes or else that candidate is selling you a bill of goods. And it's not just voting for change either we've never framed this as a campaign or the united independent party as a party where because the other two aren't doing it correctly try us it has to be something that's much broader than that something more important and more meaningful um part of it is evan and his leadership and his uh his his thinking and his focus and calling for many 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 of the things that people have known now for decades in many cases not only have not been done, but they won't even touch them. They don't even get near the governor's desk for signature. And these are organizations like homeless organizations, veteran services, senior services. These are not things that we should even be sitting here having a debate about whether we're even going to talk about it on the floor. Um, these are things that now the time is long past due for things to start to be at least addressed, at least have a broader, healthier, more inclusive discussion. I don't think it should be optional for lawmakers to deign to share with the public about what they're working on and what they've got on the docket for the coming session. But again, it's also never been meant as any kind of protest vote and certainly not fringe and not lunatic. Uh, You all have seen it, I know, but if your listeners could check on his site, belcheck2014.org, very clear positions, which you don't find there. He will take a position on. You see that all the time on Facebook. Call up the office, email us at contact at belcheck2014.org, and we respond to everything. Yes. Yes. That's true. Yes. That's true. Because I've even I've even on Facebook, you know, you bring that up. I've people have been like, oh, I've been like, oh, Evan Falchuk, Evan Falchuk. Be like, well, yeah, but what about this? And I've I've tagged him on the post, and he actually comes on the post and explains his position to the person right then and there. How refreshing, you know, someone who actually responds. You know, it's interesting you say that because just three days ago, someone uh, got on Facebook and said, well, clearly. He, he's not credible or he wouldn't have the time to respond to us on Facebook. I thought, <laughs> I thought that was so telling, and this person really meant it. And yeah. I thought that's fascinating that we're so used to it that now it's almost unfashionable if you it's, respond yes. to a voter. You deal with the, with the voters. That is I was very surprised by that comment. I don't know why. But you know, I contrast that with uh, I tried to talk to Charlie Baker. I know some people who are working in his campaign. I said, listen. Charlie should come out right, right now, show some leadership, and say he won't participate in the debates unless Evan and Jeff at least are invited. And I'm like, you know, this is a good thing. He would show leadership that would resonate. It'd be a good move for him, and it'd be a good move for democracy. So the first people I talked to are like, well, let me float that up the chain. And they're like, okay, now you've reached the next level of person. Let me take you up one more level. And then finally they said, okay, this is as high as you can communicate your issues. From here on in, we'll get back to you and somebody will talk to Charlie. You know, you bring up a great point, and I think you probably have already seen this too. Earlier in her campaign, uh, Coakley put out a very public press release challenging everyone to have at least six debates with all the candidates. And that has fallen off the radar completely. We have a phone call. Hello, listener. Hey, how's it going? Good. Who's calling? Uh, It's Mike LaBelle. Is this how you call into the radio? Show? Yeah, you're live. Yeah, you're on. You're live. You're live. We have a bunch of people in the studio, a bunch of politicians, libertarians. We have uh, 
people from the Evan Falchuk campaign, and you're live on the internet. A bunch of people listen to you. We also 800,000 pir- listeners. Yeah, pirate parties here. So, Michael, what do you have to say? Who are you voting for and why? Well, I guess thinking of who would be the least, uh, you know, damaging, I was going to vote for Martha Copley, but my sister dissuaded me from that now because she's really... Um, what know, do you think Coakley won't damage? And she goes to the highest bidder type of thing. Typical politician. So who are you voting for? I might end up for that voting for that guy. Is it Colcus? The one the independent? F- Falchuk. Is that who it is? Cal- yeah, Falchuk. Sorry. I, I haven't really seen him much. Will you, will you ca- like, we're, we're putting in this uh, straw poll today. We're asking for votes. Who are you casting your vote for today on this straw poll? For president? No, for governor. Governor. <laughs> for president. Oh, I would probably today Evan Falchuk. All right, Evan Falchuk. That's one vote. And All and, right. and, and tell us why. <laughs> tell uh, you started to talk about Martha Coakley. You were leaning towards her, but why are you picking Evan? Well, because my sister is really a big proponent of um, public education and, and and not letting it deteriorate. She works like a dog as a history teacher in Maynard, but she's also head of the school committee in Fitchburg. And she has, it's been like a little war of letters to the editor in the local paper lately about charter schools and how they sneak in there and they end up getting public money to enrich private people, much like private prisons and much like, you know, online private universities that sell stock on Wall Street and make millions for their executives and yet pilfer millions, billions even in student loan, uh, student loan payments that go directly to them from the government, and then the student is on the hook for these high interests, and you can't even get a job from these places half of them, you know? Awesome. Well, hey, I appreciate that, Michael. Absolutely. Michael, we appreciate that. It's the education. I, I totally hear you. The charter schools and the uh, the loans. That's that's we've been talking about that. Thank you very much. And that's one for Falchuk. Got so we got one for Falchuk. Thank you, Michael LaBelle, for calling. Keep listening. We'll see who's going to win this today. We'll take the next call. Hello. Hello. Who's on the line? Hey, this is uh, Alex Arsenal calling in. Hey, wow. how are you, Alex? What's up, brother? Hey, how's it going? The, Alex is a major uh, political person, collects signatures for many campaigns and many uh, causes, a lot of marijuana you know, uh, ballot initiatives and things like that. I think you collected them right now for legalization PPQs and maybe coming on the show next week, Alex. Who are you voting mm-hmm. for and why? I'm voting for Evan Falchuk for two reasons. Um, one is I really can't stand Charlie Baker or Martha Coakley. I don't like either of them. <laughs> Valid reason. I don't yeah. like Good reason. So that's one reason. Another reason is Evan Falchuk's the only candidate that has any kind of progressive stance on the marijuana issue. Um, that's a very important mm-hmm. issue to me. It's one I've worked very hard on. So I think he's earned my vote with his, you know, being brave, unlike the other candidates, and actually being able to come out and say some sensible things about, uh, you know, what's going on with the medical marijuana situation, what's going to be going on with the legalization situation shortly. In the state. Awesome. That was a great answer. Quick, concise, right to the point. I love it. Thank you, Alex, for calling in. Thank you. We are the Young Jerks. We're doing a uh, mass gubernatorial straw poll. It's the Young Jerks straw poll. We have uh, members f- from the Falchuk campaign here. Um, we also have two libertarians here. So we have a roundtable, two libertarians and two uh, United Independent Party members. And we got another phone call, and we're going to take it right now. Listener, uh, what's your name and who are you voting for? Uh, this is Diane Russell. I'm voting for myself. Wow. Hey. Oh, your vote counts <laughs> twice. <laughs> that is elected uh, official. Well, now, now we, we've also got to uh, explain another rule, too, because we're mostly taking calls from people in Massachusetts. Diane is a state rep from Maine. We're, we're going to allow, Frank, aren't we? Our main I, state I rep to cast let her a in. vote. You know, it, Maine used to be part of Massachusetts, yeah. Yeah. so <laughs> it only makes sense that we allow her to... <laughs> Cast the vote. So who are you? Who, does, that mean I, does that mean I get to vote for Elizabeth Warren? Because that would be awesome. You can vote for her as well. She is not running for election. <laughs> but who are you? <laughs> and we're talking today the governor's race in Massachusetts. We have people from Evan Falchuk's campaign. We have some libertarians and pirates. Um, we, you're a Democratic voice. Are, are you supporting the campaign of Martha Coakley? Would you tell people to vote for Martha Coakley? Um, if you are casting your vote in the straw poll, is that who you're supporting today? 
Uh, if I lived in Massachusetts, which I don't, I certainly would be supporting the Democratic candidate. But right now, I'm very concerned about making sure that the Republican person who is in office in Maine, Paula Page, gets shown the exit in about 10 days. So that's your focus. You're, you're, you're still fo- you're always know, focused I'm in sorry. Maine. <laughs> There's a strong third party candidate running for governor in Maine, right? Elliot Cutler. Uh, strong is a, a strong word. <laughs> so who's the Democrat that is going to get rid of Lou Page? I'm hoping Mike Michaud is going to seal the deal on uh, November 4th. Good deal. I was He's just a up really there. good man. And what do you have you uh, followed this Evan Falchuk campaign as well in Massachusetts? I haven't had time because I've been buried in mine and I've been buried in um, in the LePage campaign. I see. It's good to hear from you, Diane. I appreciate that you're calling in. You're you're the only uh, elected official so far to call in, and you you have two votes. So we're going to ask you again: if you have to pick someone for governor, you're going to vote for yourself in Massachusetts. Who would you cast a vote for today? Uh, Coakley. Coakley. All right. So we're giving now. Uh, Diane just cast two votes for Coakley. Thank you very much, Diane Russell. We love you. Womp, womp, womp. Hmm. She's our state rep from Maine. <laughs> she she is. is. We love you, Diane. You're mad at her because she voted for Coakley? I don't Coakley? know. I'm the question. Uh, Diane, mad at are you her. still there? Diane. Oh, we lost Diane. Uh, All right. Well, she's awesome. She just, <laughs> no, she's I, the she best. just calls in and like gives us a two minute call. Like She's amazing. Who's the next caller? Super busy. <laughs> Hello, listeners. Who, who's calling in right now? Are you on the phone still? This is Evan Kenny. Hey, wow. Evan, welcome to the party. Republican. Yo, you're, you're the second uh, in a row. Are you still elected official? Are you a uh, school committee in Wakefield? Yeah. I was Correct. asking Evan. Sorry. And the only person on the show who's ever beat Charlie Baker in an election. <laughs> That's absolutely true. Hey. That's you right. Haven't had, you haven't had uh, Duvall on the show? Uh, <laughs> no, we, he, he doesn't answer my phone calls. <laughs> we had a bit of a falling out. <laughs> you know, so, here he actually, uh, anytime he went on a radio show... He would uh, actually screen his phone calls. He did, but I no got in. No one knew that, but he would. He did, but I got in once. <laughs> and well, I good sw- for you. And I How swear to God, he knew me. Like, he, he started, like, quoting Libertarian. He, started, he quote, quoted uh, Buckley, you know, like, that was more when I was my Libertarian style that I was, like, more. He started quoting, uh, what's his name? You know his name, Paul F. Buckley or whatever his name is. William B- Buckley. Bill Buckley. Buckley. Yeah. yeah, Bill Buckley. He used to be Libertarian, then he kind of sold out in the 60s. It's a yeah. long story. So Deval, Deval it would be cool if you're cool with him, and he'll pretend he's your friend and that he's Libertarian, even if he's not. Sounds like a politician. <laughs> he's good at that, yeah. So, Evan, you are, uh, I call you the Republican All-Star. You're the young gun. You work for the city of Ainsbury now, right? You're the ma- uh, right. aide to the mayor. Correct. Wow. So, um, and you're a young, you're a young, young gun. You're friends with uh, Charlie Baker. One of the reasons I'm not as supportive of Charlie Baker is this medical marijuana. We've had these women on the show, moms, three moms, and their children are suffering. Their children are having seizures every single day, numerous times, fifty times in a day. Uh, these kids are under six years old, like three, four, five years old. Evan was the only one to come out and say, "I will help these kids. I will change the rules with the caregivers that the DPH." really have killed this program, and he immediately pledged to do the right thing. Charlie kind of pretended, but he didn't give us any proposal on, on what he would actually do. Um, what do you think? Like, if Charlie wins, will he help these mothers? Would, what do you think? You know him. Oh, well, no, I don't. I mean, I, I really don't know him personally that well. I, he did, he kind of, you know, the connection that we have is he stood up for the libertarians uh, when no one was looking and when, there was really no upside to doing so, but he did, <clears throat> and he was the only Republican to do so when the uh, Romney campaign and the Mass GOP kicked out all of the Liberty delegates. He was the only guy that said, no, I'm not taking that seat. These guys want it fair and square. Um, that's the only real personal connection I have with Charlie. Um, I'll tell you, there's a lot of evidence <clears throat> that shows that uh, cannabis oil and cannabinoids can uh, really mitigate the symptoms of things like epilepsy, um, cancer, I've even heard. Um, I think we're on the right track in Massachusetts. I don't know what Charlie will do. Um, I, I, I could, I would doubt that he would be uh, actively opposing any movement Good. on the issue. Um, I think, you know, I, to be honest with you, I don't even know what his stance is on medical marijuana. No, I think no. He said yeah. Process. I didn't either. I mean, he, he seemed, at one of the debates, he seemed more open than I thought he would be. And uh, I guess my point of this, it's good to have the conversation with you. And no matter what, I hope you will actually ask him for these moms for us. I know that he 
would probably listen to you a little more receptive based on your past relationship. Um, going on to this governor's race, we're asking people to weigh in. We're, we're taking people's votes on the phone. You get two votes because you're an elected official calling in. Great. You're a super delegate. Yeah. 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 <laughs> who are you voting for? Who, who, who are you going to cast your vote for? I'm voting for Charlie. Um, and I think when I look at um, kind of the candidate pool, I see one guy who is clearly an experienced manager. And, and one of the things that I it, it took me until I actually started working in Amesbury to realize – how important management skills are in an, an executive position like governor or like mayor. Um, Charlie has that kind of management experience. And if you, if you spend some time talking to him, um, you'll find out that he's a really, really, he's, he's a soft guy. He's, 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 uh, he's the kind of leader that doesn't, he doesn't lead with an iron fist. He kind of leads with a listening ear. Um, <laughs> and that's, you know, rarely, rarely ever will you ever hear me say that a politician is a good guy. But I do genuinely believe that Charlie's a good guy. I think he's an honest guy. I think he demonstrated that uh, when he uh, stood up for for us when we got, you know, when the, basically the mass GOP tried to kick us out of the party. Um, uh, so I mean, I'll be voting for Charlie. I think, uh, you know, one of the things <clears throat> he he spent 45 minutes with all of the uh, mayors in Massachusetts on Wednesday, and I was in the room, and he was asked about the opioid crisis, which of course, you know starts uh, ringing my war on drugs alarms, but he had a really interesting point, and this is actually, it connects greatly to the medical marijuana argument. He said there are, uh, of six, 66% of people who are admitted to a hospital walk out with an opioid prescription, and 20% of those are still, on, 20% of those people are still on the opioid prescriptions one year later. Um, one of the things that I've always kind of thought about the medical marijuana process and why it's been so oppressed is because pharmaceutical companies um, who have all of this money to lobby the legislature and, and Congress know that it's a healthier option to their painkillers. Their painkillers are addictive. They can kill you, uh, yeah. you know, and, and frankly, they, they may not even be as effective as, as medical marijuana or cannabinoids or cannabis oil. Um, so I, that was something for me that struck me, because you don't usually hear that conversation in public. You're, that's not going to be in a 30-second ad. But well, his focus sure. on prescription medication was really cool, I thought. All right, brother. Well, hey, thank you very much thank man, for, you calling for calling in. That's Evan. something to consider right there. And that's and we, count, we count your vote twice. Thank you very much, calling in. You're the man, hey. Evan, Kevin. I have, a, I have a question about that. If you do that, you skew the results, because United Independent Party doesn't have anyone who's an existing lawmaker yet. So we can't have any lawmakers call in and get double the credit. <laughs> it's true. Well, you got two people in studio. Welcome to Massachusetts. <laughs> the process <laughs> is unfair. And, and we'll promise you this. If Evan Falchuk calls in, we'll count his voters, too. Because okay. we, we, he's like in that category to us right now. You know he's not elected. So uh, a blanket thing. All gubernatorial candidates to call in. Yeah. That's yeah. A, if, yeah. if Charlie. Let's take know, a call. McCormick, please. Hello, caller. Oh, we lost no, the we call. lost the caller. We'll call, call back. 617-500. 7100. 7, and we have the young jerks. We're almost get like running out of time because we've been going so long already. We have another call. We'll take it real quick. Hi, listener. Hey, guys. Evan Falchuk here. Hey. Hey. Who's he voting for? You- <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, wanna, I cast my vote online. I want to make sure I cast my vote here. Vote early. Vote often. <laughs> you are ready to lead the Commonwealth. I'm already writing it down. Evan. <laughs> <laughs> so, so why are you voting for Evan Falchuk? <laughs> I, you know, I agree with all of his positions, and, <laughs> and it's, it's remarkable because sometimes I think that's what I think about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, how do you how do you not vote for someone where you have that? I, I feel like a connection, a bond. Yeah. <laughs> do you also think he's the best looking candidate running? I do. That's true. That's true. I, yeah, I do. There, there's some there's some lookers out there. <laughs> Martha's not bad. No. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got we got what ten days. We are working hard every single day because we got to earn every single vote. And and you're right, they do keep putting barriers up to make it so that our voice isn't heard and we aren't brought in to participate, which is why we had to file that lawsuit. Hmm. Um, and we're going to be in court on Monday and hopeful of a good outcome. Uh, but one way or the other, we're looking forward to having our voice heard in court and and to um, to being able to get to talk about the issues that voters care about. Yes, yes. And, uh, you know, we we wish you the best. We hope you win this uh, lawsuit on Monday. 
Do you think that you have a good chance at being in the debate on Monday night? Are you getting ready for it, planning still? We're, yeah, we're getting ready. I mean, I, I think that if we didn't think we had a good case, we certainly wouldn't have filed the, the lawsuit. And, um, you know, they, they invited us, we accepted, and then they uninvited us. And um, you can't do that. So that's why we had to do this, to, to try to get some answer from these guys at least, because they've ignored us since, uh, since the day that they did that to us. So, you know, it, it, it is a, it's a battle to make sure that voices get heard. But no one ever said forming a new party and, and uh, you know, challenging the, this establishment that's in place was going to be easy. And so this is this is why we're working so hard. It's great that you got Jen and you got Taylor there in the studio. Um, they're they've been working around the clock, seven days a week, keeping the team focused and out there all across the Commonwealth. Hundreds of volunteers, and you can imagine all the work that goes with that. I'm sitting here with Tom Householder, who's senior advisor to the campaign, who's been uh, quarterbacking all the all the team all across the Commonwealth with Taylor, and it's it's a it's, it's really amazing to watch it all coming together. Voters are starting to pay attention, and they're starting to see things. You know, I've been, been listening to some of the callers that are calling in, and, and you hear people saying, boy, you know, I don't really like the choices I have in front of me. What do we do? And, and it's, it, it, what's exciting about what we're doing is that it isn't a protest. We're actually building something that's for the future and for now to bring about the kind of real meaningful change to our system uh, that everyone knows needs to be done. It's just a question of doing it, and that's, and that's what this campaign represents. Thank you so much for running, and thank you so much for everything you've done for us, giving us that voice out there and, 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 and the access, too. I really appreciate what you've done so far, Evan. And I love you guys. You guys are great. And you guys, <laughs> you, you, you keep it very, very real. And um, you're, you're, you're sophisticated voters, you know, and, and there's so many people that it's easy to, to um, you know, I, I loved what you were saying about the interview I had with those, those guys on, uh, on WGBH. Strum. You know, the, the thing about WGBH was amazing because outside that building, there's this big sign that says that they're celebrating the, the diversity of perspectives. And there I was outside that building while that debate was going on thinking, I got a diverse perspective. <laughs> trouble is I'm, I'm out here and those people that don't have diverse perspectives are inside. And, uh, and we need people like what you guys do to be able to, to bring real true information to people so that they're not, they're not deceived by what they're being told by, by groups like that. Thank you so much. That was Evan Felchuk. Thank you, Evan. Thank you for Thanks, calling guys. in. And, good uh, luck we, on Monday. Yeah, good luck. Thanks. Good luck on Monday. Good luck on the following Tuesday, November 4th. Vote for Evan Felchuk. I'm going to tell everyone that today. <laughs> um, I, I don't like people telling people to, well, who to vote for in some cases, but you know what? Make an exception. Yeah, because everyone else is doing it in the media. For they're sure. They're telling you who to vote for, but they're just not being upfront about it. I'm going to be as a front, uh, very upfront about it. Um we are the Young Jerks. We have more people in the studio. We want to get, we got to get the Pirate Party in. We have more people calling in, but we're going to stop taking calls right now, and we're just going to go right to our, to who we have on mic right now, get them on the line. Um, who are you going to vote for and why? We already got, uh, we already know Jen and Taylor. You, you're obviously voting for Evan. Can you, yeah. we, we call this the speed round right now. 30 seconds or less, 10 seconds is the best. Why are you voting for Evan? I'm voting for Evan because a vote for Evan Falchuk is a vote for something much greater than just one person. We're creating a whole new party to hold more accountability in our political system, get more people involved that properly represent the majority of the people of Massachusetts rather than big money and special interests. And uh, I think uh, that's what we need to fix our political system and get our democracy back on track. Thank you, Taylor. And we have Mike Coombs running for state rep. We yep. said already uh, libertarian. Yep. What county again? Where? Uh, what, uh, Framingham. Framingham. Okay. Yes, just the town. Okay. Frame, t- city, uh, is town. it a town? Yeah. I, I it's a it's town of 70,000. Yeah. Biggest yeah, town in Massachusetts. Bigger than my city. Yeah. <laughs> so you're in Framingham and you're running for state rep as a libertarian. Who are you voting yep. for and why? I'm personally leaving yep. it um, blank, none of the above, because it's partly in protest against the extremely high um, uh, s- signatures that you have to gather, especially if you had a guy named Larry Med- uh, Madolo who was trying to get on and it just took him forever to get on it. I will say, though, that the more You're that... You're voting for none of the above I'm because going, you... What? I will say this. The more that Evan Falchuk and, to a lesser extent, Jeff McCormick and Scott, Le- even Scott Lyon... You're not going to cast a vote for any of them, though? No. I'm, all right. None I of mean, the above. All right. I'm, there's got to be the protest vote. But I will right. say the more that Evan Falchuk... you think people should vote for you? Uh, no, I'm not old enough. <laughs> actually, actually, no, I, I am old I mean, enough. I mean, in your campaign. 
Oh, yeah, in my campaign, yes. Oh, in my yeah. town. And Framingham. Vote for yeah. Mike Coombs. But if you're going for, for governor, I mean. Vote none of the above. The more that Evan Falchuk, <laughs> Scott Lively, and uh, Jeff McCormick can rack up, though, the better. You did vote online for McCormick. I did vote online for McCormick, right. but I had to. You kind of changed your mind now. I'm kind of changing my mind because I think come November, I'm, not, I'm just going to leave it blank and protest. All right. But no. I will say that the, all three of them actually, even Lively, as crazy as it, all three of them actually do bring a few good things to the table. My wish is that we could just blend the three together and make like a superhuman campaign politician kind of guy. But, yeah, the more that Falchuk can do, and he's polling pretty high right now. So so you do like Falchuk? Though. As a person, yeah. Okay, perfect. And um, Dan Fishman, finally. I've been hitting you to shut you up at times. Cause we're, so, <laughs> we're so stressed for time. And I know you, like me, you want to ask all the questions. You want to get right in there. I want to know. You're, you're like, because I know that you're libertarian, number one, and your friend's a little bit. You've got a relationship with Charlie Baker, I bet. And I have, I pretty, I have a pretty good relationship with uh, three of the candidates running. Which ones? Uh, I, I know Charlie pretty well. Uh, I've had been lucky enough to spend some time with Evan and some time with Jeff McCormick. Uh, you know, I think one of the candidates is a small-minded bigot, uh, and the other one is a former <laughs> highest, highest law enforcement officer in the state. Uh, wow. So I'll tell you, I came in with the idea that uh, I was certainly interested in seeing an independent try to shake things up at this point in time. Uh, my initial thing was that I was interested in the guys who were the best businessmen. Uh, Evan and uh, Jeff have both run very successful businesses, shown a tremendous amount of acumen and understanding what's going on. Uh, McCormick left me by the wayside when he came out on his stance on the casinos. Uh, and I really appreciate Evan's position when he says that uh, he believes that what we voted on is the law that should stand. So. Uh, I want to make clear that I'm representing just myself in this position, but uh, I absolutely have decided that I think Evan is the best candidate around. I also love the fact that he's looking towards the future in forming a new party in Massachusetts that's going to include all the independents. So libertarian, green, pirate, independents. The idea that Evan's putting forward that we're all going to work together to change the Commonwealth for the better, I'm a huge fan of that. Awesome. And uh, it's so far, it's looking like Evan Falchuk is running away with this, although online and in person uh, with the phone calls in the studio. When Dan Fishman casts his vote, I mean, that's pretty impressive, I'd say. So um, You heard it here first. Yeah, and uh, we should take a quick break. We want to thank everyone for coming in, especially the Falchuk campaign, Jen. And, uh, you know, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for supporting us. And, Thanks for uh, having us. Taylor sure. for coming in. And also Mike Coombs running for state rep. Vote for Mike Coombs. I know. If uh, you're in my town. Yeah, Even though he's yeah. not voting for anyone else, vote for him. <laughs> <laughs> and vote for Frank Capone. That's right. I'm not running until next year, though. You can so just write him in. No. Right? Sign the my papers council. when I when I pull them next year in yeah. April. And yeah. Mike, just one last thing. If people go to Evan's Facebook page, uh, you can find information there about how to get involved in the campaign this last week. We have all sorts of things that we can equip folks with, lawn signs, bumper stickers. They can work at the polls that day, and we'll hook you up. Yeah, definitely awesome. check that out. There's a lot you can do. And if you're not subscribed or, or haven't liked yet, check out Evan Falchuk's uh, Facebook page, the United Independent Party's Facebook page, the Young Jerks Facebook page. Join those pages. I, I know a lot of people have been. I've seen all those pages going up, especially the Evan Falchuk campaign. It's uh, doing really well. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you all for coming in. Dan Fishman, Libertarian, thank you for coming in. Happy and Mike here. Coombs and uh, the Falchuk campaign. And thank you for all of our callers so far. So far. We're going to keep the phone lines open. We're going to take a quick break, uh, pay pay the bills. we got to pay the bills. That's I can't what they believe say, we actually right? say that now. I was, I was thinking whether or not we should say it. <laughs> well, it's true, though. Yeah. It's like That's why we're saying it. We won't always say that. All right. We're we going to balance we really the checkbooks. We're paying the bills now. We're the young jerks on EMF. We'll, we'll be right be back. back. WEMF Radio. The sound of your They say he is a monster, dear old Mr. Green. W-E-M-F. I'm Evan Falchuk, and I'm the United Independent Party candidate for governor of Massachusetts. Like most voters, I know lawmakers aren't spending our tax dollars wisely. They just came up with a billion dollars to expand the Boston Convention Center, but they tell us they can't fund what we need, like health care, education, and job training. This just doesn't make sense. Things won't change until we vote to make a change. I'm Evan Falchuk, and I believe we can start to fix things. To learn how, please visit falchuk2014.org. Paid for by Falchuk for Governor. WEMF. Presented by the Sound Museum Boston. We are back live. Young jerks. 
Wick tally in ballots. Yeah, that's right. Old time hockey over here. I don't think we're going to have a final result on uh, the whole thing in terms of second, third, fourth place. I think we're going to need some time to figure that out, and we will put that out after the show. But uh, I think it's safe to say who won this, Frankie. I'd say I'd say that Evan is uh, is walking away with it right now. Clearly, sure. he's up Clearly. like 80, 90 percent. Like, but before we get there, we're going to ask for a couple more votes to be cast. So um, we're almost out of time. Had a great show already. Um, we still have the Evan Falchuk campaign here, and we also have some other folks running for office in the state of Massachusetts right now. Uh, the Pirate Party, who we love. Who oh, are, gotta love them. Yar! All yeah. about internet freedom, protecting our rights online. Uh, we have Nolani. Hello. I'm running in the 27th Middlesex District for state representative. Awesome. And we also have Joe Gerton in studio. Greetings. I am running in the 8th Worcester District for state representative. So we have young people who care. Um, number one, uh, why should people vote for you real quick? Each of you. Nolani. I believe in trying to restore democracy to the democratic process. Wouldn't that be nice? And to sort of help us drag the election process somewhere into like the 20th century or maybe like the late 20th century. Uh, I feel like it's a long process that uh, groups like Mass Vote and just regular c- concerned citizens are desperately trying to get the state to update things and allow petitions to say be printed on regular paper just so that regular people can actually participate or possibly allowing us to petition via our phones which is entirely possible now um kind of like what we're doing here on the show we're taking votes three different ways and the idea that uh that well so i'm also voting for evan falchuk but uh, the idea that you're representatives actually feel responsible to you to actually listen to you and explain things to you as opposed to speaking from on high only speaking through i guess priests as if there's some sort of god that is completely uh anathema to what we feel as pirates is necessary we have to get to a point where we can make better decisions for everyone not just better decisions for one or two people or one or two corporations awesome and joe why are you running? I'm or why running. should I vote for you, rather? Excuse me. Oh, sure. Uh, I think you should vote for me because I'm um, very unlike both my candidates. I am all for transparency. I'm all for that government accountability. Nobody really speaks about that in my district or in the state house, just in general. Uh, but my district is very much hurting for educational aid, state aid, and we're not really receiving that. Only one of my towns that has a regional school has received that. And even that, they're $1.4 million in the hole. My other town next to us, we're shutting down an elementary school that, you know, we still very much need. And my other town, where my state representative rep, uh, represents and lives, is kind of doing fine. Uh, so, you know, we are looking for more transparency. We're looking for cannabis reform. We're looking to change a lot of the laws that are in place. And overall, the Pirate Party, we are the people to do that. We're looking at trying to not only change the way politics are run, but the way people look at the democratic process. And that is absolutely huge, especially not in just the larger communities, but in the smaller communities. So we want to start from the ground up and start having people reevaluate who they vote for and why they vote for that. That's what I like about you guys running for state rep, too. You're not running, you know, you know, we're talking about the governor's race there. That's a big race. But to vote, you know, run for some of these smaller offices, city council, school committee, like Evan Kenny did, um, and state rep, that's what we need. And uh, I'm glad to see you guys are getting some coverage. I saw a great newspaper story about you guys this week, what you're working on, what your goals are. That's what people, you know, it's a big, big interest right now, this whole thing about the Internet from Snowden to the, what the NSA is doing, what to the DEA is doing. DEA has been doing stuff for years. Parallel uh, construction. Where they give the local police all kinds of spy information on people. And the local police never, you know, let anyone know about it. Like, that they got it from the DEA illegally through yeah. spying on you. And they, they create a second case based on that information. And it's, uh, it's time that transparency becomes, you know, that there's some accountability on these issues and that there's a voice that is interested, that knows what's going on. And people know now it's you guys, the Pirate Party. You guys are uh, speaking up for us, and I really appreciate that. And I encourage people to vote for you, especially uh, locally. These local elections, that's where it counts. Vote for both of you. Um, having said that, there is no pirate running for governor right now. Mm-hmm. Who are you both going to vote for and why for governor? Oh, I'm definitely voting for Evan Falchek. Uh, we've 
endorsed him multiple times. We think he's a great candidate. Probably, I, in my opinion, one of the strongest candidates to run. He has answers on everything. He doesn't let, leave anything unanswered, which is exactly the type of leadership we need and deserve from a governor. You know, we don't need somebody to sit there and be like, well, I'm going to do this, this, and that, and that's all right, but, and then they change their opinion completely once they're in office. That's great when it comes to election time, because great, you won the election, but it doesn't do anybody service, and it doesn't help the Commonwealth of Massachusetts become a stronger state. Awesome. Thank you so much. That was a great answer. Really appreciate it, Joe Gerton. No, I? Uh, I already said this before, but I'm voting for Evan Falchuk. I feel that uh, his ability to actually answer regular people as opposed to delegating it to other people who work for him is very, very important and something that we need more of. When it comes to allowing citizens to make decisions and to participate in the decision process, people can't just do it on their own. I mean, I've been going around with past mass amendment petitions while I've been going door to door, and a lot of people don't understand um, basic things about processes. So what happens when I sign a petition? What does it mean if I stand out on a street corner with a sign? Um, and they feel so far removed from it, in part because it's not part of their everyday life. And having people who are willing to explain it is absolutely a necessity for actually getting people engaged. Awesome. Thank you so much, Noelani. Um, it's so obvious that uh, we definitely do have a winner now at this point, Frank Capone. Don't I we? think we can call it. I well, think I mean, we, we can, still have some time left, I mean, but, but let's go over the votes. I mean, I'm looking at online right now at the Facebook, all right? Okay. Okay. He's up uh, 24 votes to one, like second place. He's up to over 23 votes online. Excellent. And in the studio, Evan is... Uh, up 12 votes yep. for phone calls and people on studio. Uh, we've had five different political parties weigh in today. Democrats, Republicans, Libertarians, Evan Falchuk's uh, United Independent Party. Am I missing someone? Yeah. Pirates. Oh, Libertarians. Yeah. Oh, pirates. Pirates. Yeah, pirate pirates. Pirate. Yeah. So we had five parties here. Yeah, pirates. they got to right keelhaul you, man. I know. They're going to stab me with uh, a, We're with more a pirate bay pirates, not so much like Somalia yeah. pirates. Well, they're right? going to make. They're going to crash my computer. <laughs> we very much have planks. You're going to hack me. <laughs> we do have planks. We, we, we do. We, we call our positions planks. Don't. Everyone don't. calls their positions planks. <laughs> Don't deny my service, all right? <laughs> I'm doing good stuff just like you guys are. Anonymous. Don't deny my service, bro. Yeah. That's kind of funny. <laughs> so, I mean, we got to say, he won. Evan yeah. Falchuk won. Evan, Let's hear it for yeah. Evan Falchuk. He won the Young Jerks. Gubernatorial poll. It's, it's done. Second place, that's what it's about. I think that uh, second place, uh, finally, funny, is a tie between... Uh, Baker and Coakley, just Bailey. Yeah. And uh, third place is basically everyone out. No, actually. McCormick? No, 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 no. We McCormick also, got a vote, right? Uh, you know what? It's a three-way tie for a second. Coakley, Baker, and none of the above took second. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the good old and then the there were some votes. There was a write-in uh, vote for Rob Patillo. Uh, there was a, <laughs> a write-in vote for Megan Ciampa, who's running as well as a write-in um, I think that's about it. Uh, oh, Scott Lively got one vote online, and uh, Jeff McCormick got a vote online, too. So a was lot it, of people got votes. Scott but Lively voting for himself? When we add up the numbers, I think that we're going to see like 80%, 90% voted for Evan Felchuk. And uh, the rest of the media says there's no support for him. I mean, we just, we didn't, Frank, we, we did not stack the deck. We were being no, fair. No, we, we, uh, we just asked people to vote. And they did. And they did. And I think the of all the, spoken. the third party candidates, Evan's been the most visible. I mean, I've seen him in the Bay State banner. I've seen him on TV. He's hardworking. He's, he's out there. He as went to Improv Boston possible. the other night. Yeah. He's always doing which something. I, which I'm upset I missed. I and, he, to and, check he, that out. and when he does it, he's happy to do it. Yeah. That's, you know, the other, a lot of these other guys that come in and, and gals, and we, we have them, both celebrities, musicians, and, you know, comedian, all these folks. Sometimes you get a certain vibe from them, like they're impatient. Is it worth their while? And, no. Everything's worth his while. For sure. I just think it seems like it. to him that it's like a spiritual calling and not necessarily just about politics as usual. And he loves to talk to folks like us, which yep. I, you know. So congrats to Evan Falchuk. Hopefully he wins uh, this thing on Monday. And uh, thank you for everyone for being yes. here in the studio, everyone calling in. Um, we have Holly. We haven't even asked Holly and Steve their vote yet. And they're healthy heady here. Um <laughs> We cover this medical marijuana often. Where are we at? Like, where are you voting for? 
I want to hear from you, Holly, first. Well, thank you, and thanks for having us in, in the studio, as always. Um, we are uh, 100% supporting Evan. Um, you know, we've heard and follow along on the Young Jerks here and have heard his stances and really become familiar with a little bit more about what he's trying to do and really um, feel as though he aligns himself with what we're trying to do for the patients here in Massachusetts. Thank you so much. And um, you, uh, you know, we've been covering this medical marijuana thing. Do you, do you have any hope at this point for any of these other candidates beyond Evan, honestly? Not so much. <laughs> Martha didn't uh, like the question when I asked her face to face in a uh, kitchen recently or uh, in her uh, campaigning trail. So I don't feel too confident. I haven't had the opportunity to meet Charlie. So um, unfortunately, or if he gives me a call to let me know otherwise, I don't believe that he is supporting that. Yeah, me neither. But, I don't think so either. I mean, I had a run in with Charlie Baker where he was working a line and I was in the line and I didn't ask him a question about medical marijuana, but I looked at him. He was I was next. And I said, Charlie, as he was reaching, as we were reaching for each other's hands, when are you going to legalize and tax marijuana? And he looks at me with this big grin in his face and goes, I don't want to legalize marijuana. Shaking my hand. Well, he said that. So that's what I can say about Charlie Baker. Yeah. And uh, we'll see what happens. It's going to be an interesting. Uh, remember to vote November 4th. Do not forget to vote. Get out there. Vote twice if you can. Yes, that's right. <laughs> no, I don't want to break any laws. Don't sue me. Don't, don't, don't. Uh, Martha Coakley, I was just kidding. I wish I remember the, the name. Of speech. I wish I remember the name of the guy who said that to um, Saul Linsky, that he loves his country so little that on election day he only votes once. That's, like a, that's an awesome quote. I can't remember the name of the guy who said it, though. <laughs> All right, we'll leave you on that, Frank. There on, you that, go. on that high point about the country, <laughs> I still got love for the country, Frank. For sure, <laughs> I'll use sell stuff, but you know, like, let's you know, let's not be that negative. I no, know. No. We got Evan running. We got something going. Yeah, no, we've we got, got great things going we'll on the right people now. In the we've studio. got we've got you know awesome people here. Yeah, we've got awesome folks who called in. Thank you, Frank Capone, and thank you, Mike Ken. Thank you, Evan Kenny, for calling in. Thank you. Uh, 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 Maine State Diane, um, I always Diane say Diane Russell. Maine State Rep Diane Russell. Maine State Russell. Rep Diane Russell. The Democrat. Good luck to her and her Democratic. Uh, you groaned when she said Martha Coakley, didn't you? Yeah. You groaned when Evan well, Kennedy said uh, like, I said know. Charlie it's... Baker. I heard you. You were groaning. Yeah, I was because and... like I know those people are both smart enough, yeah. but they're just towing the potty line. All right, and but they weren't like the funny thing is like. Uh, both of them, I had to kind of drag it out of them. Like I, I know, I think Evan was more supportive of Charlie Baker, but Diane was kind of like dodging it. She, she wanted to talk like, about I'm Maine. The, yeah, no, she, she wanted to talk about Maine. Yeah, she she was like, I'm not really interested in your Massachusetts. <laughs> but anyways, uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, Jen Belts again for coming in. Sure thing, thank you. And uh, you. Uh, thank you so much, Taylor, for coming in. Thanks for having me from the Evan Falchuk campaign again, and uh, Joe Gurton. Pirate Party, we hope you win out there in Worcester for state rep. And uh, Noani. Noani, come here, Thank you for having us. Vote November 4th, people. And Let's Somerville, exercise right? your rights. Yes, Somerville. Somerville. And uh, Mike Coombs, you can vote for him in Framingham. Thank you. Dave Crespo behind the board. All of our callers. We had some good calls today. We sure did. Thank you, everyone that called. Thank you, Healthy Hetty, for being here as well. Thank you for always for having us. Absolutely. And uh, Lu- Lucia for the Pirate Party. Lucia. Kind of running their little thing today. Thank you so much for doing everything that you do. And Dan Fishman for coming in. That's right. And you know who's live right now waiting patiently? It's coming up. They're back tonight live. <sighs> Smoking in the girls' room. Yeah. They, they're going to get into, you know, the women. They, they talk some good stuff. I, I think Great they, show. Great show. Yeah. Excited to have them back live here on WEMF. Keep listening. We'll be back next week. And uh, congratulations to Evan Falchuk and all of his supporters. You won something tonight. You won the first annual, first ever Young Jerk Straw Poll for Governor of Massachusetts. Right. First annual. Well, uh, quad annual. <laughs> quad annual. <laughs> four years. We'll see you in four years at next Saturday at 6 p.m. The Young Jerks. We'll see you later. Good night. WEMF Radio.